Thanks, guys. I think uh, before the big build-up to Kelly Avenisi, we want to talk to the teams. Of course, two guys that we've seen on all the promos, Neil Marsh and Adam Booth. Not going to talk too much about the past. I want to talk about the fight on Saturday because I don't think I've ever seen two teams quite as confident about their man's victory going into a fight. Neil, start with you. Welcome. Um, it's here. I think you and Frank Smith and me, we've had, you know, is this going to happen? We don't believe he's going to take the fight. Do you believe now that this fight is happening? I know we've still got a couple of days to go, but any doubts now? This Saturday, we're going to get a fantastic fight. Yeah, I'm as confident as I've ever been um, that we get the fight on finally. You know, there's no doubt that Adam and Josh have, have done a hell of a lot of work. You can see with the pictures what, the, what they're releasing. The, they, they come and they want business now, so we're ready. We're 100% confident, so yeah, I'm confident that Saturday night's our night and it's going to happen. I know you and Carl Greaves done a great job, David Avenisi and always in great shape. What's the keys to victory in this fight? We know you're not part of the training team from the corner, but you just believe so much in your man. You just believe he's too strong, too game, too tough, and he just wants this too much. Yeah, I think um, fighters uh, recover from losses in different ways. And I think David's improved as a fighter. He's got better and better, as per his form. Um, people talk about that there's a year of acti uh, inactivity. The delays, normally, you don't prepare for moving fighters who's got speed. Uh, we've had three camps solely on Josh Kelly. Um, a few years ago, we, we considered moving David down to 140. We believe with all the strength training and that over the last two years, he's, he's a fully pledged welterweight. We think Josh struggled with the weight in 2018. We believe his bone density has gone a little bit thicker, his muscle mass. You can see with the pictures, he's been doing a lot of muscular um, strength and conditioning. Um, I think the weight's going to be a little bit harder. And I think boxing's about levels. And I just think David Avenisian's just a little bit too soon for him. Adam, I know that uh, this fight's been bubbling for a long time. I know you've been excited with what you've seen. You've always been excited with the ability of Josh Kelly from the moment he turned professional but this is it this is the moment we get to find out find out incredibly exciting for us for the broadcasters for the fans you get to see how good josh kelly is and you think this is the perfect timing well i thought it was the perfect timing two years ago as well i think for me the difference is the way that josh will go about the fight this time because he is two years older and much closer now to his physical and mental prime than he was two years ago the fight is a better fight than it was two years ago because I believe that David has also improved. You know, since, since we missed the first fight, he's gone on and won the European title and defended it again in Spain and then had a first round knockout win. So when you look at his momentum of his career and how his confidence and his standing has evolved, it's that much of a bigger fight. And what you and the fans have on, on Saturday night are two genuine top 10 guys who are both in fantastic condition. You can see it, it's oozing off them. As coaches, we always use our perceptions and we look at how they're walking. I played some table tennis with David last night. Got a really good energy from him. And I can just see. You win? 2-0. Two, two okay. um, but he had, he had a, he had, he's got a fantastic energy about him. And as a coach, and I've long said this, uh, I, I love this sport because I love the fights where people think you can't win. And, and you know that they're 50-50 fights. I've been invite, involved in title fights where you know your man's going to win. And the celebration feels hollow. It always makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. But this is the type of fight where you know that it's real. And you know that the rewards will, will be real. And I've said for a while that I believe that this is the fight that everybody gets to see what we already know about Josh, but nobody's seen yet. We've seen the shape, and I, I get the feeling in this fight that Josh Kelly is prepared to stand and fight and, and fight fire with fire in this fight. A lot of people who are breaking the fight down talk about, you know, Kelly needs to move and box off the back foot and Avenisi is going to walk him down. I know you're not going to give too much away, but you believe in the power of Josh Kelly and the strength of Josh Kelly to stand there with David Avenisi. Yeah, but, but when I visualise David when we're doing drills or I'm, we're doing pads or technique or talking about anything, I visualise David bigger than he is, faster than he is, stronger than he is. I, I visualise him as good as he can be. 
Um, I think that both of them are going to go forward. I think both of them are going to go back. I think both of them are going to have questions asked of them. And, and I truly believe that Josh is ready to answer those questions, not just in a physical sense, because they're both going to have to do that, but I think in, in the sense that he's just a little bit special. And finally, a lot's being made about boxing behind closed doors. Do you think this fight just has too much bite and spite to it for that to be effective? We know Josh is a showman. Everybody um, gets up for it when the crowd's there. You were a part of the broadcasting team last week, and it was just a, a harrowing night, wasn't it? A, a shocking night that we saw around, particularly with Josh Warrington. You don't believe that will play a factor in this fight. There's just too much at stake, too much on the line. No, I don't. Like, sometimes sometimes uh, when Josh is electric in the gym, it's when there's no music and he creates his own conversation. It's almost like he becomes, it's almost, in, almost impossible to coach in those moments in time because he goes so deep into his subconscious that he just flows and he sees things that as a coach sometimes you just can't see because of his, because of his perceptions. So we've had him sparring with no music where you can hear the breathing, the impact and stuff like that and, and he's prepared for it. And at the end of the day, you know, it's gonna be so intense that whether there was 20,000 people there or none, they're not gonna hear it anyway. Finally, I guess you won't make a prediction, but in your heart of hearts, do you believe Josh Kelly wins this inside the distance? I wouldn't be sitting here feeling like this with all my years as a coach and my experience with the belief and confidence I have if that wasn't the case. Um, what I'm excited about is for people to realize what has been flirted with Josh in some of his fights, but without any real questions being asked of him. And I think, like all true champions, when they get tested and their back's against the wall, they show themselves. Now, when Josh fights fellas that don't go at him, sometimes he doesn't look so good. He is made for pressure fighters, and that's what I'm excited about. And Neil, as well, fine. I know you've got a few bets out on this one, one with Mick Conlon as well. If you have to choose a method of victory, you believe it's inside the distance as well? Absolutely, no doubt. You know, in you know, we respect Josh. He could make the fight very difficult for six, seven rounds. Um, but David will get to him. You know, we've got plan A, B and C. If he wants to fight, we're ready. All our sparring's been different variations. We, we concentrate on what we truly believe, but we've not neglected the other parts. And whatever Josh Kelly does, we're ready for. And, you know, if he wants to trade at the beginning, it'll end early. If, if he wants to run and try and control the pace and break us up and try to take it on late, we'll take him out late. Um, I've got absolutely no doubt. And for the, you know, for, for the public and the people watching, the, and, I, and I know many people say this, but this has been the best camp in the five, six years of being with Avenician. He's got better, he's got better. The sparring, you know, you may have heard reports of how it's been going. Some of the kids just haven't been able to keep keep up with him and um, you know all respect to all of the partners I just don't think Josh is ready for that 12 round war and you know if he had to put a prediction we'll take him out late but we are prepared for all all other events thank you Neil thank you Adam genuinely not seeing two teams who believe more that victory is upon them on Saturday night we won't have a head-to-head -head, gentlemen but we look forward to an incredible fight on Saturday thank you very much over to you guys